five-year, $190 million max contract AD. Both deals told to our Adrian Wojnarowski by Clutch Sports' Rich Paul. On that note, NBA champion, there he is, Perk. Good to see you. Big perk. That's big money. That's what I'm talking about. Huge news in L.A. Stephen A., you are up first, though. Who will win more titles over the next three years? Would you go the Lakers or the field? I'm rolling with the Lakers. I'm rolling with the Lakers. Um, I think the Lakers have a chance to three-peat, not just repeat, three-peat. I think right now, as this season is presently constructed, it's the Lakers and everyone else is a distant second coming into this season. LeBron is obviously 36. By that time, he'll be 37, going on to age 38. And I think that's where the run ultimately ends with a three-peat. I think it's entirely possible that the Lakers three-peat. I, 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 I'm not going to say a guarantee because of injuries and all of that other stuff, but I'm as pretty close as I can get to a guarantee that the Lakers are winning the title again this year. That's how distant I consider them to be from everybody else unless James Harden lands in Brooklyn. I think the only shot that exists in the field for anybody to knock off the Lakers is if James Harden ends up joining KD and Kyrie in Brooklyn. Outside of that, I don't think anybody has a chance at knocking off the Lakers this year. I'm going with the Lakers over the field. Well, I agree with you, the Lakers over the field this year, Stephen A. And believe it or not, when I handed in my Knicks fan card, when I moved to L.A. to do afternoon drive there, I lived there for six years. When you betrayed I became New the York? thing I always wanted to be my whole life. Yeah. That's right. A <laughs> Lakers fan. No, I didn't betray New York. I'm yeah. holding it down for New York. I'm leading by example. That was betray before that oh, holding Brooklyn. Holding it down. New York. Betray New York. Forget about the Knicks. You're a traitor. The, it, that's right. Saying. If I, if the Brooklyn just Nets would have been in, would have been around back then, I'd have been a Nets fan. Anyway, the point is this: I'm rooting for them to have, for that to happen, and I think they do win it this year. But I can't pick them against the field for the next three years, and this is why. LeBron James would be 36, turning 37. He'd be 37, turning 38 the year after. And what you just said, Stephen A., is the problem. When you up the ante, other teams reload, right? So we all think that Steph is probably not done winning a championship if he and Clay can get back together and the Warriors have enough assets to make something happen if Wiseman himself doesn't become a star and all that stuff, right? So you have the Warriors. When are they going to do this? Sometime in the next three years, one would think, right? You say if Harden goes to the Nets. Well, that could happen, but a lot of things can happen. Where does Giannis wind up? Because if Giannis leaves Milwaukee, he ain't going to some run-of-the-mill team. He's going to join a team that has other stars. And that team, like if it's Miami, for example, is going to be a whole lot. So I agree the Lakers win this year. And, you know, knock wood, unless something bad happens. I think the Lakers are the best team again, and that's two. But then by year three, like it's just hard to win a championship. By year three, LeBron's 38 years old. Most of the cap money is going to LeBron and AD. And you got wherever Harden winds up, wherever Giannis winds up, Steph and Clay, and whatever moves they make, an ascending Nuggets team, an ascending, like, an ascending Dallas team. Who knows who they acquire? I think it's too much to ask that the Lakers beat the field over the next three years. I do think they win this year. Well, Max, let me tell you why you're wrong. First of all, the Lakers are the NBA champions. With that being said, I would think all the other 29 teams will act aggressively in free agency and win the battle. But guess who won the battle in free agency? The Los Angeles Lakers. They got they upgraded. <laughs> they got true. rid of salary and upgraded at different positions. They got rid of Danny Green and went and got Wesley Matthews. By the way, Danny Green, I love him to death, who was making 15 a year, and you signed Wesley Matthews at 3.6 million, and then you go and steal Montrez Harrell, which I said a time and time again from the Clippers, the sixth man of the year candidate, and then you trade and you get the sick the run up for the sixth man of the candidate of the year and Dennis Schroeder. And what I'm saying is, yes, you have LeBron James. Yes, you have Anthony Davis. But guess what? We're leaving out one particular name, and that's Rob Palenka. I have full trust in Rob Palenka, yep. and he hasn't steered me wrong yet. yet. Just because of what he did in this free agency, he went in there with a mamba mentality. He went in there aggressive. He said, we're not satisfied. So with that being said, at the rate that he's going, if he continue to do this year after year in free agency, I could see the Lakers 
going on the three P like Stephen A. Smith said. Because guess what? In a couple of years, it's going to be bigger free agents that come up on the market. And right now, when my, what made me realize this is that Montrez Harrell went to the Lakers. So what that tells me is that. Uh, the Los Angeles Lakers are eye candy to the rest of the NBA, and guys are willing to come there and straighten up to be in L to be in Los Angeles and to go and have a chance at winning the title. Perk, let me get this straight because I agree with everything you said about Palinka. He's done a great job, and I was I, I had my eyebrows raised like Palinka really. Kobe's guy, like that seems to me like Kobe wants to buy the Lakers maybe or something like that. Or Kobe's w winning the kind of chess game with Magic and LeBron. Who's going to control the team? You know, and, and, and but Palinka did a great job. Like the Mamba mentality is right, a great job in the offseason. But let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Next three years, if the Lakers win two, that means they beat the field. So there's only one championship now for everyone else to go around. That includes the Warriors when Clay gets back and everything they might do. That includes wherever James Harden goes, including probably Brooklyn, Stephen A. That includes Philadelphia with Simmons and Beat. Or what if Harden winds up in Philadelphia well, call me when it happens. with Daryl Morey as GM? That includes where, wherever Giannis goes, including Miami. You see Pat Riley well, with his team sitting around for the next three years, not sniffing a championship. On. I'm just saying let the me field respond. is a lot. Well, let me respond. First of all, you almost shouldn't be allowed to talk about this. Number one, you didn't mention one word about Kawhi Leonard. You didn't mention one word about Kawhi. Your best player in the world. Mm -hmm. Didn't mention one word about him. You want to hide from the camera and get Max? You feel free. I mean, you want to hide, want to hide from the camera again like he did yesterday? You could, Max. You could, because you didn't no mention Kawhi not about. one time. That's number one. That's a number Paul two, George issue. You number two, you don't get to talk about Harden either because you've lamented the fact that. Kyrie Irving is on a team and proclaimed that Kyrie Irving is a problem for any team that he's on. So that gets washed out of the mix. Obviously, you lamented and you were on the record once saying that Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid didn't need to be on the same team. So you don't get to bring bring them up. And when you bring up Dallas, damn it, can Porzingis stay healthy first, please? Can he do that? Maybe we can have a thing. And as for you, KP, here's what I would say to you about Rob Palenka. No, no problem there. Rob Palenka deserves a lot of credit. But we can't forget to leave out Rich Paul. Rich Paul does represent LeBron. Mm. He represents Anthony Davis. He represents KCP, <sighs> Contavious Caldwell Pope, who's was retained. And oh, by the way, he represents Montrell's arrow. So I mean, when you when you consider all of those guys, I mean, when we <laughs> say Rob Palinka, I mean, what did Rob Palinka have to do? Go 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 to McDonald's or something? I mean, did he go? No, did he have to go to Roscoe's? <laughs> I mean, what, what exactly is it that he no, had to do, Stephen KP? A? Because when you got Rich Paul. Bring it all in, bring it half his clientele to the damn Lakers. I mean, if you're Rob Palenka, I mean, what, what, what exactly is it that you have to do? Right. And, and Stephen A, I'll listen, that's you. a real great quick, point. Stephen A, I Go just, ahead, just Max. want to say this. Stephen A, I think you just won the debate. Clutch Sports decides who wins the championship. Clutch Sports decides who the best team in the world is, whether that's Miami, Cleveland, or L.A., that's exactly what happened. KCP signed that $17 million one-year deal. Okay, come on, bring your guys here. LeBron shows up. AD shows up. Lakers are the best. It, it's true. I can't, and I can't argue against Montrell's that. he represents Montrell's health. Yeah, okay, okay, Perk. Well, yeah, at least well, he did. Well, with that being said, guess what? Guess what? Plus sports represent about 50% of the league, and it's only going to get bigger. Guys are going, going to continue to go to clutch sports. With that being said, you're going to have guys like Bradley Beal that's going to be on the free agent market. And right now, what we're witnessing, although you may say, oh, the Lakers don't have the cap space, they might not have the room to sign a Bradley Beal. Well, what I've noticed, <laughs> everyone everyone has been talking about, oh, this offseason, there, there's not going to be a lot of money to be issued out, not in Los Angeles. They have the Brinks truck, the Loomis truck, and, and, and the Dunlap no. truck pulling up down there at the Staples Center. So no. what, that, what that goes to tell me is that Jenny Buss is not afraid to spend top well, dollar to make sure that they deliver championships Kendrick. in Los Angeles. Kendrick, I know you Best can appreciate the point. The I, I know you can appreciate the point that I'm about to make, Kendrick, because it's very important to you. I know it's very important to me. I want to give Rich Paul and, and Clutch Sports all the love in the world. 
but I don't want to ignore the Goodwin brothers, Eric and Aaron. They represent Damian Lillard along mm -hmm. with other players. That Damian Lillard got a two hundred and fifty million dollar deal. You know, mm. yeah, Anthony Davis's max is one ninety for obvious reasons, but Damian Lillard stayed with the same team, got two hundred and fifty plus million. You got a guy like Bill Duffy and others representing cats like Luca and others, and he's been around for years. Let's give him some love. A lot of times when we talk about the mm -hmm. paucity of African Americans in head coaching positions, certainly in executive positions where the only brother with real power is Masai Ujiri in Toronto. And damn it, he's African. He ain't even African American. And oh, by the way, he's running a team in Canada, <laughs> not in the United States of America. So in America, they still don't give any brothers power. Close but when enough. it comes to the agency business, we got a few brothers out mm. here doing some special things. And that's not to take away from Jeff Austin, Jeff Wexler, and white dudes that are doing great jobs. But we got brothers in this business, in the agency business, obviously with Clutch Sports, but Eddie and Aaron, along with, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, that's right, Eric and Aaron, I'm sorry, along with Bill Duffy, let's give them some credit, too, on national television. I'm going to make sure I yeah, do Yeah, but that. they don't determine the champions. In but, this but particular, Stephen, that's it's all just good that they don't have that. LeBron. Good shout them out. I'm just saying, yeah, I'm just saying, Clutch Sports determines who wins the championship. Well, you did, say, sports, like, when you they did say if there was a threat, Max, mm -hmm. it would be Luka, did you not? Yeah, that's the threat. Okay. If, if Porzingis <laughs> can stay Luka. healthy, that's the threat. And, and Perk's saying. been talking about Phoenix. That's another threat. You know, that they're, they're going to be really good. But the Lakers are winning it this year. Lakers are winning it this year. And they want it. And it's because, you know, I think these, they're are gonna three these are clutch sports clients. Let's be honest. That, that's the best argument you can make. I have no answer for that. Yeah. If clutch is going gonna, is gonna, is gonna to prop up the Lakers, Lakers are going to win. Well, I, with all due respect, I, hmm. I actually don't believe that there's many things that I say that you can argue with, Max. But I just that, that's just me. That's just me. <laughs> you, know you finally won an <laughs> argument. Be happy. <laughs> Take the W. I know you're not used oh to it. Oh, my God. <laughs> all right. Let's uh, leave it there. Maybe Clutch wants to represent television hosts, too. Uh, guys, I got another subject I want to get into with you. So the Rockets and Wizards agreed to a blockbuster trade involving two superstar point guards. Houston traded Russell Westbrook to Washington, where he will team up with all-star Bradley Beal. Meanwhile, John Wall joins James Harden in another star-studded Rockets backcourt. So here's the details. Houston gets Wall in a lottery-protected 2023 first-round pick. Washington gets Westbrook. Max Kellerman, bigger deal. Walden